Hey, what's going on? Y'all back with another one, back with another one. We are going to talk about part two of Elon. We're going to talk about part two of Elon and we're going to get to the fourth and fifth part. Yes, we're going to talk about part two. The history of Elon and the rest of the Eastern culture part two. That's what we're going to do. So the other one, this should be good. This should be good. Okay. So we we talked about last week, last uh, Wednesday, we talked about the cultures, how they form and things like that. Elon, we talked about the, uh, the empires. We talked about the, um, what are we talked about? Cause see part one, we talked about the modernness of the people of, Iranians and things like that. We talked about that. We did the research and everything. And yeah, they got the military in Anatolia. You know, everybody did the search. But shout out to the old boy with the research with www.realhistory.com. Okay. So we did talk about their gods, the Elam, the Elamite gods, and all this stuff. We talked about the tools and we talked about that. We talked about the Turks and a little bit of that, right? But the second part we talked about on here is the Assyrians. And of course, yeah, we talked about the Assyrians and in their little uh, template, their little template, their little template. Because I'm going to read, read much of it as I can. But we talked about the pendant. We talked about the uh, the pale blue uh called any and the cards with the picture depicting the Elamite king, Shinshinak, Ishunak or something like that, you know, that king they have, you know, but it's, it, you know, we showed the slavery, the conquest, the Neo-Elamite period. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So it's like, you know, you, you have this stuff and we talked about them. But, you know, they show the hair and everything. So that's that's part. That's the second part. The third part we talked about, of course, we talked about Cyrus and the Persians. We, we talked about that, too. That that's, you know, that's coming back to me now. We talked about that. That's that's important of Elam's history and the gods and all that. Now, today. You know, I'm going to share the screen, but. um, Today. take myself out of it y'all give me one second i'm gonna pick up the screen boom today we're gonna talk about part four the soliloquies the soliloquies in elon period akamen empire parthians another conquest Afghanistan and places like that, what they would say, modern Afghanistan and Mediterranean Sea. Let's see, the Parthians, I talked about them in a long live stream, I believe two years ago. As you can see, you know, I'm not going to read most of it because I already done, did this before. That's according to Soliloquius, the first, Nictar, or something like that. And you see the people and their idols and of themselves. That's so the people would look in idols. Okay. Parthian king, Sanartian the second, that's the king, and the Parthian princess, of course. That's what they would look like. Said to be the bronze bull of the Parthian. I mean, bronze bus, excuse me, bronze bus of the Parthian uh, prince. So it's pretty much, you know, Parnini, the Parnini shoot, the Parnini shot. Central Asia's Hestepi had been the, the home of the nomadic and tribes for centuries. But these nomads roam across, roam across the plains, attacking the unbanized countries to the south. East and West, they are known under, uh, known under many names. One of the tribes was the Parnini 
and third century BCE, but the area where they have lived in their side of Jarazix uh, or something like that, but you know, I ain't going to try to pronounce it again. I don't say Jax was the Turk Turkmenistan yeah. was excuse me was occupied by a tribe, but the Persians know uh, knew knew it as the Dali and literally robbery. But the kings of the Soliloquy dynasty were never able to never able to the area uh, now uh, the area now known as you know, Yabakistan and Turkmenistan. Yep. See, place Yabakistan and Turk, uh, Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan, something like that. These countries used to be different areas before they was conquered. But they come from is these people. So this is a little bit accurate right here. During the political period, these nomads started to move off to the countries known as the and Arya and Parthia. In 2145 uh, BC, the sad trap named Ang Anagrogius revolt from the young Seleucid king Seleucus, who was just a uh, succeed to the throne. Ended the confusion, but the Parthia was attacked by Parthi. by but the Parthian direct Astrovi for three. Later, the Parnian later in the Parthia and in country and offensive by the king Solidicus the second and in master and the Hyrcanian was also subdued by the Parnian and the Parnian made their of Hectoplatamus and the Parnian were known as. But in the years that followed, their kings recognized the the soliloquy kings are their superior. Arnini expert horsemen known as, for the master the technique of the turning their bodies while a full gallop and then firing arrows. And their purpose, the second was known as the Parnini and shot later to known as the Parnini shot. See? As you can tell, Parnini's right here. That's the Parnini shot with the arrow, like they're talking about. And, you know, but we ain't going to read the rest because you, you get the point. There was conquest in what you would call Yabakistan and um, Terminkistan. You know, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I apologize. But that's just, they was pronounced, but it, the interesting names. But Sananzian, I think Sananzian Persian Empire. This is a Persian Empire. The Sananzian Persian Empire, which you got probably somewhat of the day, but they're Muslims today. Those are not the original Persian. Those are Muslims. Those are Arabs. Persians of today, which will say they're modern day Arabs now because of Islam. But the further back previously, they could be this particular empire culture. But, you know, that's a whole nother story. But we, we know people move to land and land all the time. Close to Arabia. This was Rome continued back and forth until Septimus Servinus became king of the Roman Empire, but then attacked Parthia and Jessica was captured 198 AD. As a result of this victory, large spoils were brought large spoils were brought to Rome. Parthia was impoverished, or at the same time they were, you know, revolts. Get this go to spoils. And as you can see right here, of course, as you can see. Historically, the Sanzanian period marks at the end of the ancient and the beginning of the medieval era of the history of the Middle East, so-called Middle East, you know, still the Eastern world. By meaning, by the beginning of the third century AD, universalistic religious, such as Christianity, Mechanism and even Zoroaster, uh, I mean, Zoroastrianism, yeah, Zoroastrianism and Judaism had by now absorbed local religions, uh, religious religions and cults. 
Both Sanzaninian and the Roman empires adopted official state religion of Zoroastrianism from the Sanzaninian of Christianity for the Romans. But the new Sanzaninian rulers were not as tolerant religiously as the Soliloquies and the Parthians have been and religious persecutions did occur under the Sanzaninian rule. This is true. Yeah. So all this, you know, you know, and you always seen this statue. I think I had this in pre-record. That's the Sanzaninian uh, king. And all these people in the culture. So, yeah, man, the, these cultures were wild, man. You see it. And that's what you got. And then, yeah, we talked about that. It goes into the Rome and all that stuff. Interesting, ain't it? But it's pretty much the same. You know, you you see the conquest and the people. All that. And they trusted their hair was like that. You know, they tried to assume the hair was like that. That's what my man was saying. They used the same type of hairstyles. Not surprised, but there's some truth to that. Yeah, everybody knows the hairstyles and all that. Yeah. As you can tell, they used the hair. So that's what they were culturally. Unidentified bus in Iranian museum. It's identified, you know, but that's the culture of the people, what they would look like. They don't look like they, they don't exist anymore. They probably, you know. The gold plate depicting the Sassanian king spreading the Roman, said a Roman tapis. You know, you see that? That's where they go to war and battle. They show that symbolism. So it's pretty much like, you know. Were the ancient Persians white, they say. As with all black civilizations, the albino people have been very, you know, Esau them have uh, voiced themselves making fake artif uh, artifacts depicting the ancient Persians and whites. But what was incredibly as they, they have somehow convinced themselves as the authentic statues and a release of short or long curly hair Persians, those who long curly hair beards that those people of the dreaded locks and white people were often spoke of delusion nature of the albino people, but that's what we call them, you know, Esau now, because they are so-called white, by the way. But it takes even an extreme, but it's even ever to teach, we shall not teach the albino people the difference between ancient depictions of whites and blacks. Yeah, this is how ancient Persian depict whites. That's how they, that's how they depict it. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, if people ask, you know, that's how they depict it. And they do that on purpose, you know, but that's part of history. They don't teach you the real like I do. Shouts to this brother right here with the research, man. Like, you know, we're going to the fifth part. We're going to move on from that. That's that's turns into a debate. They'll get crushed every time. They got bones and artifacts. They digging up the earth now. They've been doing that for like the past 13 years. And prior to that, they've been doing it. 2012 was a great year. That's why 2011, I mean, 2011 was what what was 12 years ago now it's 11 years because they've been doing this forever so shout out to this brother right here he did had this since 2012 so that's what built my channel the elam the end of elam in persia now known as modern day iran the pictures black and white yeah ancient blah blah, blah. so we ain't gonna get into it we it's the kushites would would have that's what they depict them. People of Northeast Africa still utilize the ancient hairstyles. Yes, some do. Some do. They use the ancient hairstyles. But the uh, Sanansian king identified by the crown. Of course, she's the first, you know, of course. Of course, course Corsero the first, of course. I talked about this. At a death star, you know, I talked about this in the live stream, but a Sanansian played again, hunting, 
kill an animal like a leopard or whatever that is. I believe that's a leopard, but yeah. It's pretty much like this is like the, the fifth part, you know, of part two. And I showed this before too. I showed this before too. I read this on a long live stream. So it's pretty much, you know, this is Persian. This is a little bit the Sanzanian people. You know, they stayed in the same spot. They didn't move nowhere. You'll see these bus all the time. But yeah, noticeably he was hunting uh, probably gazelles and stuff. They was into that. You know what I mean? Hunting probably gazelle. Then the Arabs. All about 570 AD, the Hamid. The Himorites of Yemen, the Himorites of Yemen who have been subdued by the Ethiopians of Aksum, spelled in Kasaru the first for help. But the Emperor Kasaru uh, sent a sent a fleet with a small commanded by Va um, Varis and who met Maskarik and the Ethiopian ruler of Yemen in the battle of killed him, uh, killed him, but after. Abja Jafar, Muhammad, Abin Yaris, Al Tabri, uh, Tabari, 838 to 923, you know, AD, the CE era. The CE era, they would say. But the Persian um, historian and the theologian reports that the main. But the reason behind the victory of the Viharis and, and the Aksumites was use of the of the Penjigan, uh probably a catapult. They use a catapult. I'll say we'll say catapult. But a piece of the military technology which located peoples were unfamiliar. Iris then took up in, in residence in the Persian government uh, governor of Yemen, which became the vassal state of the Sassanids until the arrival of Islam. See, Islam came later. That's why that's why you know the cultures is is changing. You know they he's showing they are the Arabs and what they got today. But we ain't gonna get into that. It gets a little political, but you know the Arabs and the conquests they came in. That's what you got now. That's the past and the present. Yeah, that's what you got now. But you know it's no shot at nobody. This is you know it's strictly educational. And this is the people's Sansomanian king list. They got all the kings and listed their names. And they had a history, man. They have a history. You know what I'm saying? They had a history. They said the Yemenite bronze kingdom of Sheba, 715 BCE. That's in Yemen. That was in Yemen, by the way. Historically, Arabs came uh, came be divided into three parts: relatively advanced African Western part, northern northern Middle Eastern part, and little known little known from the eastern part. But the historical sense, but the extreme, the extreme southwestern port in Arabia Peninsula in three kingdoms, three early kingdoms, but the first of Man, uh, Minan, the Minian uh, were centered in the interior. What is Yemen and probably, probably embrace of the east of Southern Arabia, you know, but you know, it's a long read, but you know, BC, but you get the point, but you know, cause I, I think I did this part on a law live stream. I'm not sure, but it, it reads the rest of here. I'm just going to skim through it and be like, you know, it's stuff that you already know from my old videos, but this is like a reference what's going on. But, you know, the Arabs had a thing, man. Persia rule, like you got now, Arab Persia rule. And here's that religion we talked about. Zoroastrianism, right here. That's what they was into. Egyptians did it as well, you know, later on. But that's a whole that's a whole nother story. You know, that religion's been around forever. Some of them still practice that, you know, and Islam is just the standard now, the clergy and all that. So it's like, you know. You got the Arabs and all that stuff. We we're not going to get into that. Y'all know the rest of the history and the Fezes and the Turks and all that. We We know all that. 
so it's pretty much like I showed y'all the military. I think I showed this years ago. I think I showed this years ago. Could be one of our people over there, Iran. Like that could be one of the, the tribes of Israel. But we, you know, but that's a whole other story. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna go that far. But that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much it. That's like the end of Elam and Persia. This is what the fifth part represents: modern day Iran. Let's see how much time we got. Oh, we. Oh, okay. Okay, we got time. So what we learned here today is this is how it was, man. Like, you know, going down the screen for a minute and I'm going to take it off the screen. But yeah, yeah. But that that's it. That's all I got. But, you know, but Elam in Persia. So basically, I'm just saying, like, if you want to know, that's the history of it. And the history of those people has been around for years and years. And so you basically understand that this stuff mattered at a time where people didn't know the histories of these people so now you got the research now you got everything and you just like saying look at it like look this is the people but that period is is tough it's a tough period and yes yeah, slavery was a thing and all the other stuff right that's pretty much stuff that's in there So you pretty much in it for the long haul, but any, anyways, but that's all I got. You know, this is part two of what we would say. Let me go back here. What we're going to call it. History of Elam and the rest of the Eastern uh, culture. Part two. Okay. This is part two of it. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm just looking at it to a podcast. I don't know what that is, but, but anyways, you'll see me this week on Thursday thrills, the 49th edition, but you know, but yeah, that's, that's going to be it. We tangle up here, but you know, it's pretty much it. But yeah, yeah, that's that's how you that's how you understand what you what what you would say right now. But it's pretty much like when you talk about the Elam culture and things like that. So I would say those people back then, yeah, they were brutal, they was violent. It's pretty much what you see in all cultures, darker cultures. Has some violence too, besides the white culture, they will say, you know, we already stem that assertion. But then again, the reason I'm doing this, that's the piece of Elon, right? We understand that. So I'll do another one. Uh, not the next week. I'm going to talk about something different. I'm going to add a little bit of politics. We're going to get on to the utilitarian concepts again, why people are brainwashed and stuff like that. I'll find something political philosophy uh next week and next wednesday and then i'll let y'all know what it is and i have some thoughts on it and then what's going on what's flowing around so until next time the people of yai israel until next time we'll do this again in a couple of weeks down the line so with that signing off shalom to the people of yai israel again and i'm out